Now, global warming has reached an all-time high, 2023 smashing the record for the warmest year. This according to the world's leading climate scientists. In a report published today, they warned that our remaining carbon budget could be spent in the next five years pushing the world beyond the 1.5 degrees Celsius of warming. It comes as the month of May is likely to be the 12th consecutive month of record-breaking global temperatures. Joining me now is our environment editor, Valerie DeCamp. I know, Valerie, I bumped into you in the corridor a couple of weeks ago and was moaning about how the weather here in France uh, wasn't uh, turning and changing. But Very rainy. Indeed. Exactly, but now right. things seem to have changed. Let's talk about uh, what is going on because there's no doubt that human, human activity Activity is driving this rise in temperatures, which we're seeing. Scientists say that 2023 was still unusual. Tell us more about that. Well, they, what they tell us in this report is that the rate of warming is unprecedented. So essentially it hit a 0 0.26 degrees Celsius per decade. That's up from 0 0.25, which sounds like a minor change, but it is the highest ever recorded in, ter in terms of the rate of warming. Uh, and that brings us to last year uh, hitting uh, 1.43 degrees Celsius of warming compared to the pre-industrial era. So scientists say that's not just a little jump. It is an unusual jump. And so they try to look into it. Um, and like you said, it Unsurprisingly, human activity is mostly to blame here. Uh, the buildup of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere from the use of fossil fuels. And they found uh, th that was pretty interesting to me that 92 percent of last year's heat was caused by humans. The rest mostly due to El Nino. We've talked about this before, this mm. uh, natural warming phenomenon in uh, the Pacific Ocean that could bring changes um, in climate changes around the world. What's interesting, though, is that they also looked at uh, the another factor contributing to heat, and that is the decline in air pollution. And so essentially, we need to distinguish between greenhouse gases and particles, uh, fine particles in the air from car fumes, from factories. I mean, both of the, those sources emit greenhouse gases, planet warming gases, but also fine particles, aerosols that you also find in uh, wildfire smoke. Is that PMI? Essentially, it is, yes. Um, and so that is obviously bad for our health, but it can have a cooling effect in the atmosphere for the climate, because essentially what you see there Delano is that those particles that can reflect some of the sun's energy back into space, not all of it, but some of it. Um, it is a minor uh, effect, according to a scientist, but air pollution in Europe, U.S., China could be uh, behind, you know, the rise in temperatures as well. Now, what's particularly alarming is the fact that the world's carbon budget uh, is rapidly running out. What does this mean exactly? Well, scientists have established uh, a threshold of 1.5 degrees Celsius uh, beyond which we will see more dangerous climate impacts. Um, and how quickly we get to that point depends on how much carbon dioxide we're putting into the atmosphere. Now, we know that in 2022, global annual emissions reached 55 billion tons. Um, and we know, though, that we have a budget of 200 billion tons less left uh, mm. before we hit that uh, critical threshold of 1.5 degrees. And so that is the equivalent of five years of current Emission. So that brings us to 2029. And what's alarming is that scientists uh, previously had this budget. I mean, they thought the budget was 500 uh, million tons and they revised it to 200 billion tons. And so that's what's really alarming. Uh, Valerie, you often come with bad news for us here, but today you. you have some sort of good news from scientists. Yes, well, in the report, they do have some positive news. Um, they tell us that greenhouse gas emissions have not yet risen beyond uh, pre-pandemic levels, uh, and also that the rate um, at which emissions have grown in the last decade has slowed since the year 2000. Okay. Um, so scientists say that emissions have indeed rebounded from the COVID-19 pandemic, but it is too early to say if greenhouse gas emissions have already peaked. And so essentially what that means is that they're relatively stable emissions. Um, we know that CO2 emissions from coal and gas and oil are rising, but they remain below pre-pandemic levels. Now, we don't need to stabilize emissions, and that's what scientists tell us. We actually need to bring them down to zero. So even though they are not uh, rising yet, 
yet beyond pre-pandemic levels. As long as emissions continue at the same level, the warming will continue at the same level. Valerie, thank you very much for that. Valerie, the camp there with sort of a silver lining. I don't know if it's good news or not, but we'll take it. We'll take it. Thank you for that. We'll take what we can.